Hello students! In this video lesson, we are going to discuss Introduction to Set Theory. Here are our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to define set, write sets in three different ways, define the empty set, find the cardinality of a set, classify sets as finite or infinite, and decide if two sets are equal or equivalent. What is a set? A set is a collection of objects. For example, we have here a collection of toys, a collection of books, or even a collection of numbers. So we call them as a set. Each object in a set is called an element or a member of the set. A set is well-defined if for any given object we can objectively decide whether it is or is not in the set. For example, the set of even integers is well defined because whenever you pick any integer, you can either say that that specific integer is even or not. For instance, when you pick the number 20, 20 is certainly an even integer. While when you pick, shall we say, negative 5, negative 5 is certainly not an even integer. Whereas, the set of popular books is not well defined. Why? Because whenever you pick an arbitrary book, you are not certain that that is popular or that is not popular. Because for some, a book may be popular, but for some, it may not be popular. So in short, whenever you pick a book, you are not certain if that should be part of the popular books or that is a part of those which are not popular books. Now, there are different ways to designate a set. We have list or roster method. We also have descriptive method. And we also have the set builder notation. Now, what is Roster method. In roster method, the elements of the set are listed between braces with commas between the elements. For example, we have the set S of months of the year that begin but begin with the letter M. Is at all. So we have March and May. So each element in the set is listed within braces and is separated by a comma. This is a well-defined set because every month either begins with letter M or does not begin with letter M. Here are other examples. The set of natural numbers or counting numbers is defined as the capital letter N which is composed of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Also, we have the set of even natural numbers, which is represented by the capital letter E, and that is equal to the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, so on and so forth. And also, we have the set of odd natural numbers, which we notate by the capital letter O, and that is composed of the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, so on and so forth. So take note of this. For the purpose of our discussions, we are going to notate or give the, the notation of our set of natural numbers as capital letter N, the set of even natural numbers as capital letter E, and the set of odd natural numbers as capital letter O. The set notation. This symbol, this one, is used to show that an object is a member or an element of a set. For instance, if A is the set of days of the week, we could write this as this, meaning 
that Monday is an element of set A. And we read that as like this. Monday is an element of set A. Likewise, we could write Friday is an element of the set A. Because Friday is also a day of a week. On the other hand, when an object is not a member of a set, we simply use this symbol. Okay? Now, for instance, 22 is not an element of this set because basically this set is composed of odd counting numbers and 22 is even. Now, descriptive method. The descriptive method uses a short verbal statement to describe the set. So example, use the descriptive method to describe the set B containing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 in two different ways. So our solution here is very simple. B is the set of even natural numbers less than 14. We can use that because they are actually even numbers and those numbers are less than 14. So that is one way that we can describe a set using descriptive method. And this is also another way of doing it. B is the set of natural numbers between 1 and 15 that are divisible by 2. Oh, nga naman. Because they are all even numbers and they are all between 1 and 15 and all of them are even so that they are all divisible by 2. Now, what is set builder notation? Set builder notation uses a variable, braces, and a vertical bar that is read as such that. That vertical bar again is read as such that. Here is our example. The set composed of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 can be written in set builder notation as like as this one. So we read this as the set of elements x such that x is a natural number and x is less than 7. So again, x such that x is a natural number or we can say x is an element of the set of natural numbers and x is less than 7. So we can use any letter or symbol for the variable but it's common. To use x so we are used to have x as the common notation for an element of that set let us have some examples we have use set builder notation to designate each set then write how your answer would be read aloud so letter a the set r contains the elements 2 4 and 6. Letter B, the set W contains the elements red, yellow, and blue. So how are we going to use set builder notation to represent the sets? So our solution here is for letter A, we can actually represent this as like this. R is equal to open brace X and vertical bar and then we have this one. So we can read this one as the set of all x, this one, such that x is an element of e or x is an even natural number and x is less than 7. For letter B, we are going to have red, yellow, and blue so we can have this one. And we read this one as the set of all x such that x is a primary color because red, yellow, and blue are primary colors. Now, let's have some examples on using different set notations. For instance, designate the set S with elements 32, 33, 34, 35, so on and so forth. First one is by using the roster method, then the descriptive method, and then set builder notation. Okay, we can represent this in roster notation by this. So we just simply use the braces that contains 32, 33, 34, 35, so on and so forth. So that is roster method. 
Descriptive method is that we will just simply describe this set of numbers. So we can say the set S is the set of natural numbers greater than 31. Okay? And using set builder notation, we can represent it like this one. That is x, x such that x is an element of the set of natural numbers or x is a natural number and x is greater than 31. Now, let us talk about the empty set or the null set. A set with no elements is called an empty set or null set. The symbols used to represent the null set are like this one, open brace and close brace with, without any element inside or this symbol. We sometimes call this as a null symbol or a phi in Greek letter. So example, we have this one x such that x is a natural number between 1 and 2 so that is null because actually there is no natural number between 1 and 2 another one the set containing a number which is both odd and even is an empty set Totoo nga naman, because there is no number which is both odd and even and the last one is if m is equal to x such that the set which contains x such that x is the number of human being living in Jupiter so so then x or m is actually empty because there's no human being living in Jupiter perhaps based on our signs okay let us talk about cardinal number the cardinal number of a set is the number of elements in the set. So for a set A, the symbol for the cardinality is this one, N of A. So which is read as, of course, N of A. So we have some examples for this. Um, the set R, composed of 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, has a cardinal number of 5, since it has, of course, 5 elements. Um, this could also be stated by saying, the cardinality of set R is 5. Let us have some examples for the cardinalities of some sets. For instance, find the cardinal number of each set. This one. This one, letter B. And letter C is this. And letter D is that, the null set. Okay, for letter A, that is very basic. The cardinality of A is of course 6 because there are 6 elements in this set. For letter B, we have X such that X is an element of the set of natural numbers and X is less than 16. So, how many natural numbers are less than 16? So there are actually 1, 2, 3, 4 until 15. There are 15 elements, so the cardinality of B is equal to 15. Now, this one is very simple. There's only one element of the set, so therefore the cardinality of C is equal to 1. And the null set, we know that null set contains nothing, so the cardinality of that is equal to 0. A set can also be finite. Or infinite we say that a set is finite if it has no elements or has cardinality that is a natural number a set that is not finite is called an infinite set for instance we have the set P Q R and S is finite since um, it has four members P Q R and S and this set composing 10, 20, 30, so on and so forth until infinity is an infinite set since it has an unlimited number of elements, the natural numbers that are multiples of 10. Now, let us try to classify these sets as finite or infinite. Letter A, we have x such that x is element of n or the set of natural numbers and x is less than 100. 
Letter B, the set R is the set of letters used to make Roman numerals. Letter C, the set. And letter D, the set M, which is the set of people in your immediate family. And letter E, set S, which is the set of songs that can be written. So for letter A, since we have X is less than 100 and they should be natural number, ibig sabihin it starts from 1, so on and so forth. So this one is finite because there are just finite elements of this. And letter B, letters used in Roman numerals. So example, I, X, V, L, M, C, they are used as Roman numerals. So that is finite because we just simply use finite letters in Roman numerals. What about letter C? So, so on and so forth, so on and so forth, the three dots, ellipsis, is so on and so forth, so there are infinitely many. So the answer for this is infinite. And for letter D, that is number of people in your immediate family, that is finite, because there are just finite members in your family. And then for letter E, set S is the set of songs that can be written, well, basically there are there are a lot of possibilities for the songs that can be written by mankind. So this is infinite. Now, let us discuss about equal and equivalent sets. Two sets A and B are equal, and we write that as A is equal to B, if they have exactly the same members or elements, while we can say that two finite sets A and B are, are equivalent and we write that as this one, A is equivalent to B. If they have the same number of elements, that is, the cardinality of A is equal to the cardinality of B. So basically, when we say that two sets are equal, they have, of course, the same number of elements and those elements are exactly same elements. But when we say that they are just equivalent, they just only have, or those two sets only contain the same number of elements. Example, state whether each pair of sets is equal, equivalent, or neither. This one. So PQRS and ABCD, so basically they all have four number of elements for each set. Well, letter B is this, okay, letter C is this. And letter D is that. Now, letter A, they contain, all the sets actually contain four elements, but those elements are not necessarily the same. So this one is equivalent. Letter B, so 8, 10, and 12, the second set also contains 8, 10, and 12. So, meaning they are both equal and equivalent. Equal because the, the elements of the first set are just the same with the elements of the second set, equivalent because they have the same cardinality, which is 3. The third one is neither equal nor equivalent because the first set only contains one element, the number 213, while the second set contains three elements, the numbers 2, 1, and 3. For letter D, that is equivalent but not equal because they have the same cardinality, which is 4, but they are not equal because uh, the first set contains the number 10 and the second set contains the number 11. And 10 and 11 are not the same. One-to-one -one correspondence. Two sets have a one-to-one -one correspondence of elements if each element in the first set can be paired with exactly one element of the second set and each element of the second set can be paired with exactly one element of the first set. For instance, the sets 8, 16, 16, 24, and 32 as elements and ST, UV as elements have a one-to-one -one correspondence because basically we can pair the, their elements and they have exact pairing for each one, for each of the elements. So this one is um, one to one. For letter B, the sets containing X, Y, Z as elements and 5, 10 as elements do not have a one to one correspondence. Because basically, when you pair 
any element of the first set to any element of the second set, there would o- will always be one element which has no pair. Well, in fact, the elements of the first set has cardinality, or the first set has a cardinality 3 and the second set has a cardinality 2. Now, let us talk about the relationship of equivalence and one-to-one correspondence. We say that two sets are equivalent if you can put their elements in one-to-one correspondence. So, ibig sabihin, if you can pair those elements of those two sets, then therefore, we can say that they are equivalent. Whereas, two sets are not equivalent if you cannot put their elements in one-to-one correspondence. Okay? Now, for our summary, a set is a collection of objects. A set is well defined if any object can be objectively determined to be either in the set or not in the set. Each object is called an element or member of the set. We use three ways to identify sets. First one is roster method. Second one is descriptive method. And the last one is the set builder notation. Also, a finite set contains a specific number of elements, while an infinite set contains an unlimited number of elements. If a set has no elements, it is called an empty set or a null set. Moreover, two sets are equal if they have the same elements and two finite sets are equivalent if they have the same number of elements. Two sets are said to be in one-to-one correspondence if it's possible to pair the elements so that each element in the first set has exactly one match in the second set and vice versa.